Hello and welcome. It's me, Persita, and this is Persita's Paradox. Thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate you, as always, for coming and finding me on this thing called YouTube. I appreciate you because I am posting on a new day, and I appreciate all of you who are absolutely following me over onto this day because I, I just don't know. YouTube is not digging me right now. So it is what it is. Your girl's got to get the video up, so I'll do my best to do this, especially with all of the cool things that are going on. You might say, why are you smiling, girl? I am out for spring break. I know, I know, I know. A lot of you didn't know that I was in my doctoral program and I am and I'm tired and I'm super excited to be off, even if it's just for a few months, my God. So let's just go into what we wanna talk about today because you know, in my mind, I'm really thinking about what I just said. like. What in the world made me decide after all this time that I wanted to go back to school? And I just wanted to really talk about just something along those lines. So today I want to ask you, how are you going to get your groove back? And you might say, well, what if I didn't lose my groove, Priscilla? Maybe I'm in, you know, a position where I've been in this groove for the last 25 years and I'm grooving. Well, this then would not be for you, boo. This is for the people who are changing careers or who are adjusting to new things. Um, maybe you've moved over to being a content creator. Or maybe you've started a new business or something of the sort. I just want to really touch bases with these mindsets and this type of person because there comes a time where you really do feel extremely stagnant and it's very complicated to do what you do, but it's so easy for people who don't do it to really not acknowledge it or just be in a place of understanding what you go through on a day to day. So I want to send a shout out to a few people that I know, you know, I'm not going to go into saying a lot of names, but if you know me, I'm watching you. I see you, you're glowing. I'm super excited about it. And I really want you to know that I'm proud of you. And you might say, Priscilla, well, you should tell the person's name. Well, the people that I'm talking about, and there's a few of you, um, are just not really those type of people. But I, this smile and this this tone lets them know specifically who I'm speaking to. And I just want you to know I am extremely proud of you. I'm happy that you are doing what you want to do. And I want to talk to the people today about how to get them where you are. And where that is, is finding your groove. Now, I don't know if there's like a specific formula for finding your groove. I would like to tell you that it would be nice to kind of sit down in your thoughts and figure out what you want to do. And, you know, then you go into, you know, possibly prayer if that's who you are, it's who I am. So I'd go into prayer and then you possibly might discern, uh, you know, some things that you felt like you're very good at. I mean, we've heard the cliche, do what you're good at because then the money will come. That's kind of hard when you have a person who does multiple things that are very good. And I've told you previously that you just have to start and really get going. But I realized that even after you've started and actually get the, the idea of what you want, and you're moving in it and you, you know, you're to some degree flourishing, you're at least moving. There's still this moment of a groove. And I feel like the groove is what I really want to discuss today, because the groove to me is something different than actually just getting going. It's like a place of peace that allows you to kind of flow with it, right? It's like things are not necessarily gonna go your way. It's very hard to be in this world today when everything is about validation. I mean, absolutely everything is about if other people think you're great, right? It, there's really no self-worth that we talk about that's true. We all go through an idea of wanting to be something more than what we are identified as, not that we are, because I, I'm a strong believer on we all are absolutely unique and fantastic and fabulous in our own way. But there is something to be said about the person who never gets the acknowledgement from anyone else, right? No one wants to go through life and not have anyone say something back to them that, you know, along the lines, more than just you're pretty, even though some people that's enough. But for people that that's not enough, then I'm going to say this video is for you. Because I think that when you're really walking in this idea of your groove and you're really understanding that, you know, the things that are really worthwhile are very slow to come. And I know that sounds terrible because we live in a very microwave fast world of society that everything has to really like be, you know, very quick, the 30 under 30. And, you know, you need to be uh, well into your career before you hit 40, and you know, and all of these things. And, you know, you, you get more accolade, to be perfectly honest, when you're young and you have become successful more so than if you've actually accomplished it 
over a journey of life, right? In your 50s and in your 60s. Most will tell you that you actually are too old to try to do anything. So I want to actually be in a space where we are talking to that population of people today. We're talking to the people who may feel as if you don't know if the mojo that you have, this groove that you're feeling, or the groove in the time that you will have lapsed in your life will be enough in order for you to accomplish what it is. And, you know, you're taking it all in stride and you're trying to say, I'm going to do the best that I can with what I got and da-da-da-da-da. These are the people that I want to talk to today. So I will start with myself because I think that it's a very interesting dynamic to come into an idea of going back to school after years of not being in it. And a lot of people, you know, give you the kudos. Oh, yeah, girl, that's, you know, way to go. That's so cute for you. But not really understand the dynamic of what it is. And I'm not here to give you a dissertation on you know, how complicated complicated it is to go back to school or what that puts on the mind or the body or anything of the sort. But what I'd like to say is it's just that type of energy of when someone's doing it, it's very complicated to really even know how to acknowledge if you're proud or if you're not, or if you understand or if you're not. It's like this really, I don't know, kind of a lap disconnect of like how to really make that work for a person. So if you're not in the population of people who are also doing that type of thing, you really do feel alone. I know for me, I, there's not a lot of people that I can talk to about going back to school. Most people are really into their careers already, or they're just not in a space of, of really being able to understand it. Or again, like I said, it's, it's more of that better you than me kind of personality. So it's very complicated, again, to focus on this groove that you really want to kind of pick yourself up in and move. I am trying to figure out how exactly does it work for others? Because for me, it really becomes just surrounding myself with young-minded people. That sounds crazy, right? Because I'm definitely never have I been the type of person that says like, yeah, you know, I need to be around uh, young people. But I realize that at, I say that because the young people are who are where I am, meaning they're in the classrooms, they're doing the work that I'm doing, they're my colleagues, they're my peers. They are absolutely in realm of what is happening in my life. So when you're trying to get your groove, I'm going to say you have to find that population that's in the groove with you. Otherwise, it's very complicated for you to figure out how to sustain the mojo, how to sustain the accountability, how to sustain the excitement, how to sustain any of that. You typically hear us say, you know, Things like, you know, we're going to go on vacay and we want to make sure that we relax. And, you know, I'm all about those proponents of life. And I'm absolutely going to tell you, I think they're necessary and they should happen. But there also is this time and effort where you have to put in a lot of hustle and a lot of mindset towards what it is that you really want to do. And you want to just find that idea of what it is you need. And sometimes finding that idea is around like-minded people that don't look like you or not in your age group are not in the um, the sector of the world that you would normally want to lean to. So I'm going to say that one of my key attributes has been to do that. It's been strange initially because I was really like not the type of person that wanted to do it. And I've always prided in myself on being around quote unquote like-minded people. But I have this thing where I kind of had to understand that in order for me to feel the energy that I needed, I had to really find a, a propeller, so to speak, to my boat. I had to find some type of a push to my boat. And initially I was completely embarrassed, to be perfectly honest. I didn't really want to be in an energy of the old person in the classroom. And I used to tell some friends that, uh, you know, when I first started this journey of like, you know, I really don't want to be, you know, the old fogey in the classroom looking like, you know, the old person in the room trying to take courses and not really connecting and not really understanding what the kids are saying, right? Calling them kids and things like that until I really started to understand like these kids are the same people that are going to keep my mojo going. So I say that because I want you to feel what I'm feeling because if you're going through what I went through or you're... I'm going to be the first person to say, get up and do it. Do it and do it like you have never done it before. Because I really didn't know how much I was suffering from ageism. And I said all of that for the last good five minutes to really tell you that I struggled with just the idea of ageism. And I didn't really know that that was really what my mojo was 
was doing to my mind in regards to me not feeling adequate enough to even have the mojo. So it's like I felt good. I wanted to tell myself that I was good, but I really suffered with that. When I say and pose the question to you about your mojo, that's what I'm really trying to say. I'm really trying to put you in a space of understanding it does become so complicated to really just get down to the nitty gritty of like what it is that you're dealing with. You don't really know. I mean, a lot of us talk about healing and I'm just gonna tell you that, you know, well, I'm gonna touch on it, but I'm not really gonna go too deep, but I'm just gonna say this. There's definitely more to this idea of heal because it's really different than healing. I don't really like to use that term because I don't really believe healing is the term that we should use. And I'm gonna talk about it more in next video, so I'm not gonna give it away too much. But what I wanna say in this particular video about it is we have to really understand that what we're going through, we sometimes have this energy of feeling like we're alone in it, which, so which stalls in does not give you the ability to sustain the mojo. And if you don't sustain the mojo, then you don't really have the, the capacity to really like get going in what you need to do. So I'm saying to you that sometimes you're gonna have to step outside of your comfort zone. Sometimes you're gonna step outside of things that you thought you would never ever do. You're going to be involved in things that you would never ever do because it's going to be a part of your journey. And it's going to be a part of sustaining your mojo. And you have to be clear in what your goal is and getting past what you've been told it should look like during the journey and just make it happen. I use school because school for me was that hiccup. I'd always wanted to go back to school, but I always felt like I was just too old to do it. Plenty of people who are not going back to school would say, oh girl, go ahead, go back. I mean, you know, do what you want to do. Mind you, I can't respect that. They're not going back to school. So it's easy to tell somebody to do something when you're not doing it. Meaning maybe they're there just to cheer me on, but that sometimes is not enough for you to sustain your mojo. Does that make sense? So what I'm saying is that I actually had to be around people who were in school to feel the energy and the vibe of what they were actually going through to decide if I actually could do it. At that point, I was able to create Mojo. Now, after some years, I've been able to sustain it. And what I'm hoping for is that all of that rattle that I just gave you about my life gives you some sense of energy to understand what it is that's holding you up. For me, particularly, it was ageism. It was ageism. And until I could do that, I could not sustain my Mojo. Now that I have been able to comprehensively cope with it, right? To just cope with it because I'm still going to feel it. I'm still going to be in a space of having triggers about it. I'm still going to be in a space of having moments where I feel like I don't belong. But in order to sustain the fortitude to actually move through it, I have to keep my mojo going. And what that mojo is, is me. It's simply me. It's simply reminding myself that me, myself, and I is all I need. I want the validation. I'd love people to tell me how cool it is. But at the end of my day, when I close my eyes at night, I have to remind myself to tell myself what I just said about myself. And then I have to affirm that and be confident in it and understand that it's okay if no one does it. And it's okay if ageism creeps up on me when it decides to. And it's okay if it feels like this journey is never ending. And it's okay if I don't know if I'll live long enough to make it happen. Meaning I could die at any given moment. There's absolutely no guarantee on life. So I'm learning that. And in saying all of that, I'm hoping that it gives you some insight on where is your mojo and how are you actually going to create something that's going to sustain it? How are you going to attack the thing that you know that keeps coming for you to deter you from having the mojo, the swag, the confidence, the arrogance, if I will, to actually complete whatever it is that you want in life? It's necessary, especially if you're in my age bracket, especially if you've been told that it is too late, especially if you're in that over 50 crowd and you're trying to actually get up and make things happen and everything seems so quick and so 
detached from you and so technology driven and all those other things that can kind of like put you off and be off putting to you. I want you to really understand that I understand because I've been in it. And even in this video, I kind of struggled with if I actually wanted to be that personal with you. But today I just really felt like somebody needed to hear what I'm saying because somebody is struggling with what I used to struggle with. I don't struggle with it anymore, but I absolutely will tell you that I've learned to cope. Did you catch that? It's definitely something that's ongoing. Some days it's great. Some days it's not. Some days I'm feeling as if I can take on the world. Other days I just want to literally roll into a corner and tell school to just go all the way to hell. So understand that it's not anything that's absolute, but you need to understand at the end of the day that if you have it in your spirit that this is what you want to do, you want to keep your mojo protected, you want to be in a space that you actually complete whatever you're trying to do, I promise you, all it's going to take is two things, you and God. And as long as you have those two things, anything is possible. And that mojo, that mojo will sustain. So in saying all of that, I want you to know that I appreciate you for listening to me rant today and rant about myself. And I hope that everything that I said to you gives you some type of insight, not only about who I am, but also what I hope for you and what I wish on you for you to be able to move and do these things called life much easier than me. Because if I can be a testimony, that's what I want to be. And today, that's what I have for you. So thank you, as always, for joining me. If you've watched this far, thank you so much. Please like, share, and comment. Uh, absolutely hit the subscribe button if you have not subscribed. And of course, hit the notification button because that's just necessary. So I don't even have anything else to say. I just want to make sure that you know that I appreciate you. And as always, before you can do any of the things that I just said, please do these three. Live life authentic. As always, thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.